me slightly change the uh, configuration of my custom application. So first of all, let me go to the channels section and let me open the Microsoft Teams channel. In this one, if we go to edit details and we click more right here, we can see additional settings for our um, Teams channel. Here you can see we have an app ID right here. Just for the sake of curiosity, if we go back to Azure, let me open a new tab, and we go to Entra ID app registrations. Let me search for ESPC HR something. You can see that we have an application, the one that I created before, but we also have ESPC HR Copilot, Microsoft Copilot Studio. This one has been automatically registered by Copilot Studio as the name implies. And you can see that this is PC36, blah, blah, blah. This is precisely the ID, app ID that we see right here. We need to copy this value and we need to use this value to configure the reader app that we created to expose an API. First of all, in the uh, expose an API section, we need to specify the unique URI for this application which will be API as a moniker, followed by bot ID. Remember that under the cover, we have the bot framework, dash the unique app ID of the application that I showed you before. So this will be the unique URI for the API exposed by our custom reader. Then we can add a custom scope. You can call it whatever you like for me, it will be hr.read, but could be whatever you like. Make it available both to admins and users. And because I'm a lazy developer, I will simply copy and paste the name. You should actually provide a real description and the real display name. But as I said, I'm a lazy developer. Sorry about that. But actually, I want just to go straight to the uh, topic of this uh, webinar, and I don't want to waste your time writing long descriptions. OK, add a scope. Now we have this specific permission scope that we are uh, making available through our app. We want to make it possible for Microsoft Teams to have single sign-on and automatic authorization for uh, accessing this application. So in the lower part of the screen, authorized client applications, we want to declare that we want to add a uh, few uh, uh, pre-authorized uh, client applications. Let me do that for the uh, Teams web app and for the Teams desktop and mobile app. So these are the IDs uh, that I'm going to use. This is the ID of one of those two applications. If I'm not mistaken, is the web one, but I might be wrong. I don't remember every single GUID. Sorry about that, but this is one of them. And I will authorize for this specific scope that application. And of course, you can find the GUID of these applications in the official documentation provided by Microsoft under learn.microsoft.com. So uh, don't be scared. I, uh, you don't need to uh, go crazy finding those values. They are just available on learnmicrosoft.com. And I'm going to do the same for the other application ID, which Again, if I'm not mistaken, it should be the uh, desktop uh, and mobile app or the other way around, it doesn't matter. So now I uh, configured a unique URI for my application. I uh, pre-authorized uh, the uh, Teams uh, client applications to consume that specific API. So now let me uh, copy the uh, actual name of this permission, as you can see, which is this one, API, bot ID, the unique ID slash HR read. Okay, let me copy it. And let me go back to my uh, custom copilot. So here, from a resource URI point of view, we need to specify the unique URI of our application. Okay, so this one, and we save. Whoops. It doesn't like it. Oh, nice. OK, let me try again. This was unexpected. Client ID is missing. Oh, yeah, 
I forgot to add the uh, client ID, my bad. And I need to copy the client ID, which I have actually here in the notepad file where I copied my settings. So let's do that. Sorry about that. Okay, now it sounds better, almost. Okay, let's see if it is just complaining for the sake of it or if it is actually working. Edit details, back here, more. Okay, most likely was a leftover error message. Okay, and let me go back to my settings. Again, under security. Now, let me go back to authentication. And here we have one section that I left blank before, which is the token exchange URL. Here, when we want to use single sign-on with Teams in a custom copilot with custom authentication, okay, we simply need to uh, paste the name of the permission scope that we want to use. So we save it. We publish it again. Okay, and it will be able to do a single sign-on and it will not require any more the login flow for the user, but it will automatically rely on the settings that I provided to uh, make it possible to have single sign-on in place. Just to give you an idea, and as you can see here, I don't have any more the login, but I just have the welcome message because I'm already authenticated. Just to give you an idea, the reason why I'm showing you this kind of settings is not only because I think it is beneficial for you to know that you can do more than just Teams integration, which is really powerful, but not the only option you have, okay? But also because you can uh, play with something like that. You can, for example, publish your custom uh, copilot through a website or through a mobile app and provide this kind of experience to your end users. This website, which is the one I started from, the Contoso HR, does have right here a uh, SharePoint framework uh, application extension, which allows you to have a custom footer. In this custom footer, I have a custom copilot button that I can select. And by clicking on this one with automatic single sign on, as you can see, I don't need to do any login. I can interact, I can write a prompt targeting my custom copilot, which is one that I created before. This is not the ESPC one. That's another one that I created before because it requires some additional steps to be available in this kind of UI. But here I can still interact with it and provide the same kind of prompt. So how can we hire employees in our company? Come on, Paolo, you can write company. Okay, let me trigger this prompt. And as you will see, we're still able to get back from our knowledge base, which is based on the documents we have in this document library in this site collection, all of the information we need to hire a new employee with a reference to the document with the, with the detailed information about the hiring procedures. So again, this is a solution, a temporary solution. If you can't wait, let me put it this way, you can't wait to have the native integration of a custom copilot agent for SharePoint, which will come up uh, pretty soon, okay? But using Copilot Studio, eventually using uh, this SharePoint framework solution that you can find on GitHub and using a properly configured Copilot Studio with uh, custom authentication and single sign-on in place, you can achieve uh, a quite nice result from an end user experience. Of course, the button and the footer can be placed wherever you want based on the extensibility model of SharePoint Online and based on what is available through uh, SharePoint uh, uh, framework extensibility. <music>